Hi everyone, it's Katrina. From losing your way going to visit family to getting disoriented on a hike, you never know what could happen. Here are seven people who miraculously survived after getting lost in the wilderness. Number 7. Alexander Kovalev If you get lost in the Siberian taiga, your chances of survival are minimal. Between the frigid temperatures and the presence of bears, wolves, and tigers, it's unlikely that you'd emerge unscathed after being lost for even a short time. I mean, it's cold out there. Alexander Kovalev is living proof of the occasional exception. Nobody knows why Kovalev disappeared into the taiga in late 2017. One day, he simply left his workplace and vanished in the Amur region of Siberia, where he was employed as a gold digger. He abandoned his truck with a full tank of gas, ruling out the possibility that he had become stranded. Furthering the mystery, he also left his eyeglasses in the truck, and without them, he was basically blind. Kovalev was rescued two weeks later when he was discovered walking alongside a highway. He was frostbitten and traumatized and unable to explain why he had slipped into the wilderness. The whole thing was very strange, but the good news is he made it for two weeks and was then rescued. After all, that's what matters. Number 6. Lisa Theris on August 12, 2017, Lisa Theris, a 25-year-old legally blind woman who had been missing for nearly a month, emerged from the woods and stumbled onto the side of Highway 82 in Midway, Alabama. She was naked and covered in sores, bug bites, and poison ivy rash. During the 28-day ordeal, Theris drank muddy water and ate bugs and mushrooms to survive. Not very smart, don't do that, guys. By the time she was rescued, she had been presumed dead. Death wasn't far from a reality for Theris, who had lost 50 pounds and had become so weak she was walking with a cane, which she had fashioned out of a fallen tree branch. Theris was lauded for her extraordinary survival skills, as she should be since besides all the other challenges remember that she was legally blind. But soon after she was found, questions regarding her disappearance raised the suspicion that she may have been high on methamphetamine and hallucinating at the time. Shortly before Theris went missing, she had been in the company of two men who had just robbed a cabin in the woods. Police theorized that she ripped her clothing off due to paranoia that her bright red shirt would draw unwanted attention from someone nearby, or maybe the two men, and that she descended further into the thousands of acres of woods because she was disoriented. Whatever the case may be, it's a miracle that the young woman survived. Number 5. Barbara and Lamira Briley the holidays are all about family, and when someone doesn't show up to a gathering as expected, it can't mean anything good. For Barbara and Lamira Briley, a wrong turn almost resulted in tragedy. When Barbara was driving her great-granddaughter Lamira from New Jersey to North Carolina to get together with family in late 2016, she got lost on a remote property in Dinwiddie County, Virginia, after taking a wrong turn that led them deep into the woods. They became stuck after running over a tree. Following the quote-unquote rules for getting stuck, the two waited where they were for someone to arrive, but a few days passed and no one did. Meanwhile, when they failed to arrive at their planned family gathering on Christmas Eve, relatives reported them missing. One reason they weren't found sooner is because the road they were on is considered private property and no one but the owner is permitted to drive on it. A few days after becoming lost, a passerby spotted the vehicle and found Barbara unconscious near a tree. He called 911 and the two were taken to the hospital, treated, and reunited with their family. Barbara and Lamira survived on food that was in the car. Lamira was quickly released from the hospital and although Barbara was airlifted and in serious condition, she also thankfully survived. The family suspected that Barbara's wrong turn was the result of confusion caused by construction and closed roads redirecting her GPS, as she had been driving to North Carolina for Christmas for many years and was at least somewhat familiar with the route. Always remember, keep snacks and water in the car. You never know what could happen. And now for number four. But first, do you like camping in the great outdoors? Are you a survivalist? Let us know in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe if you're new here. We have lots of new videos coming up. Number four, Liang Sheng Yue. In April 2017, a pair of Taiwanese hikers were found in the Nepali Himalayas after they had gone missing seven weeks before. Unfortunately, only one of them was alive. Three days before rescuers arrived, 19-year-old Liu Chen Chun had lost her battle against the elements. However, her boyfriend, Liang Sheng Yue, lived through the ordeal and was airlifted to a hospital in Kathmandu to begin his recovery. 
The couple who had decided to hike without a travel guide only had 10 days worth of food with them, and when they set off to find a village, things took a turn for the worse and they tumbled down a ravine. When their food ran out, they relied on salt and water to survive. According to Liang, living in the wilderness was cold and uncomfortable, that's an understatement, and it was often difficult to sleep at night. Liang lost nearly 70 pounds throughout the seven weeks he and his girlfriend spent trapped in the Himalayas, and he underwent procedures to rid his body of lice and maggots, but he was otherwise in surprisingly good health when he was rescued. The rescue came as a double-edged sword to Liang and the couple's friends and loved ones who were grateful that his life was spared but grieved for the loss of Liu Chen Chun. Number 3. Shannon Leah Fraser On September 21, 2014, 30-year-old Shannon Leah Fraser visited the Golden Hole Swimming Spot in Queensland, Australia. As Fraser and her partner, Heath Cassidy, made their way toward their destination, she somehow became separated from him and disappeared into the rainforest. She had no supplies with her and was wearing nothing but leggings, sandals, and a shirt. After wandering through the bush for three hours in search of Shannon, Heath called the police to report her missing. For 800 hours, emergency crews searched the dangerous snake and spider-infested bushland, only to turn up no signs of Shannon. The search was called off after 15 days, with Shannon's family and the police assuming that she had been murdered or eaten by a crocodile. After Shannon had been missing for 16 nights, a man eating breakfast less than 30 meters from where she was last seen was approached by Shannon herself. She was severely sunburned, had lost nearly 40 pounds, and had survived on insects, river water, and small fish. Shannon was also naked, aside from being wrapped in a fertilizer bag because the trees had ripped her clothing off. During her time in the wilderness, Shannon thought of her three children to keep her emotional strength up. After being rescued, she was taken to a hospital and recovered pretty quickly. She was treated for third-degree burns and underwent surgery to remove splinters from her legs and feet. Some people, including the police, wondered at first if her rescue and her story of spending half a month in the wilderness were part of an elaborate prank. They simply couldn't fathom someone surviving in the bush for that long on their own. It was also believed that the extensive search that had been conducted would have found Shannon if she were truly stranded in the bush. After speaking with Shannon, however, law enforcement set aside their doubts and her experience has been deemed genuine. Number 2. Keith Parkins Two-year-old Keith Parkins disappeared from his grandfather's ranch in Rudder, Oregon in 1952. He was only gone for a day and a night, but being a toddler, there was a likely chance that he hadn't survived. Little Keith was found eight miles from the ranch, unconscious and lying face down in the snow. His jacket had been removed and his clothing was ripped. A missing 411 documentary was made retracing Keith's steps from point A to point B, during which a time discrepancy was discovered. It would have taken the little boy 19 straight hours of walking to get where he ended up, and many people simply didn't believe that such a lengthy trek was possible for a two-year-old. The ensuing theory was that Keith had been abducted during his short disappearance. He was interviewed, but naturally he didn't remember many details about the event, which may have been for the better, at least for the sake of Keith's mental state. Number 1. Andrew Gaskell In late 2016, a young man named Andrew Gaskell was rescued from Mulu National Park in the Sarawak region of the Malaysian Borneo after spending several weeks lost and alone in the wilderness. Rescuers reported that he was malnourished and his legs were covered in leeches, but he was conscious and able to communicate. The Australian man was airlifted to safety and received medical treatment, but was in surprisingly good condition, all things considered. The 26-year-old Tasmanian engineer had set out in late August on a trip to Asia. His family and friends reported him missing on October 20th after failing to hear from him for some time. In early November, shortly after his rescue, Gaskell posted an apology to his Facebook page, stating that he was sorry for all the trouble he caused by failing to register for a guided trip of the trail he was on, and instead attempting to trek it alone. He also thanked his family and friends, as well as the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs, the Malaysian community, local police, and park staff. It hadn't been the first time that Gaskell ignored cautions against adventuring alone. At the beginning of his trip in Baco National Park, he bypassed signs forbidding solitary hikers from traversing certain tracks. As a result, he admittedly ran dangerously low on water, suffered immeasurable psychological damage, and nearly succumbed to exhaustion. He managed to return to safety on his own that time, but hopefully, after requiring professional rescue and brushing dangerously close with death the second time, Gaskell will furthermore stick to guided tours. Thanks for watching! Do these stories make you more cautious about an upcoming trip? Let me know in the comments below! Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time! Bye!